Luke 14, verse 25, Jesus said that huge crowds following always wherever he went, you know, just wanting an opportunity to get a glimpse, to hear something. Uh, it's just amazing. And Jesus, he, he, he began to speak to him in verse 26. And he said, if any man come to me and hate not, and we know he's not literally talking of hate in that sense, but he's talking about comparatively father, mother. You know, nothing in this life compared, can compare to or should compare to the love that we have for him and the pursuit we have of him. As awesome as my wife is, and as much as I love her, it should still pale in comparison to the love that I have for God. You know, but the thing is, is, is it does not, my, my love for him does not diminish my love for her. Actually, my love for him increases my love for her. I don't even know how to love her correctly if I don't love him. I don't even know what love looks like if I don't have relationship with him. You know, if the only picture I have, the only image I have of love is what we get from this world, no wonder we got our kids falling after lust and falling after being manipulated. And if you love me, you would, and all these strings attached to all this mess, they ain't got nothing to do with love. You know, and then you find out what agape love really is and how we're supposed to be love on display and how we're supposed to demonstrate that and love brothers and sisters and one another. He said, it's by that everybody's going to know. Woo, Jesus. He said, in comparison to wife, children, also, he said, even your own life, you cannot be my disciple. Whosoever does not bear his cross, come after me, cannot be my disciple. Which of you intended to build a tower? We got a lot of building going on. There's a lot of things going on, and this, you know, applies in a spiritual sense. It applies in a literal sense for what he's about to release. Which of you intended to build a tower, build anything? Does it first sit down and count the cost? to see if you have enough funds to sufficient to finish it. He said, lest happily after you've begun and you laid the foundation, you're not able to finish. And it says, uh, the people ride by, they see what's going on and see it incomplete or incomplete, and they begin to mock. And they say, this one began to build and is not able to finish. What king is going to go out and make war against any other king and not first sit down with his counselors, with his counsel, and said, you be a, try to figure out, can I with 10,000 go against him with 20? He's speaking about counting the cost, and that's where I want to focus our time on tonight. Father, we just come in Jesus' name. We tune our hearts, our minds, our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Speak, Holy One. We have ears to hear. Thank you, Lord God, that not only do you speak to us, you show us how to apply what we hear to our life so that we receive the full empowerment, the full equipping that the Word has available for us tonight. God, we refuse to leave this place the same way we came in here. Lord, I believe there's a new level of glory for us to ride out of here on. Lord, I believe there's a new empowerment available to us. Lord, there's a, a higher level of faith that you can pull us into, Father, as we lean into the Word and we allow the Word to speak to us, to mold us and change us, Father God, more into your image now than ever before. Have your way tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, this is such a, a powerful, valuable life lesson. It's just counting the cost. Not, spirit, not only spiritually, but in, in everything. Man, so many mistakes I've made in my life is because I didn't really sit down and figure out where this thing was going to take me before I got involved. Yes. Y'all ain't got to help me out. You know, you just sit there and ponder it if you want to. But thinking about, you know, what's it going to cost me if I do this? But then you flip the coin and what's it going to cost me if I don't? Because you got to look at both sides of it. And we're going to look at both sides tonight. And it's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, but it is a necessary thing. It's just a necessary thing. What's it going to cost me if I do it? What's it going to cost me if I don't? George Meyer said this many years ago, and I just said it so many times, I ought to claim it like my own. <laughs> Two pains in life you're going to endure, without a doubt. It's either going to be the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And it's not a bad thing to be disciplined. You know, he said, be my disciples. He, he means disciplined ones, ones who are willing to do what it takes to get where we need to go. You know, financially, you got to do what you need to do today so you can do what you want to do tomorrow. That's Dave, right? Isn't that Dave Ramsey? I mean, that's one of the things. But that's, that's not Dave saying. That's a Bible thing. Thang. That's a T-H-A-N-G. <laughs> just so we make sure we're understanding how they're going to talk in heaven. I'm just getting y'all ready. <laughs> getting y'all ready. This is, hey, he speaks funny. This is Jesus stuff. Y'all just get with the flow so when you get to heaven it'll be like whoa what are they saying that yeah I, I know that i recognize that it's a jesus thing discipline or regret numbers 33 we're going to look at counting the cost and i just titled tonight if you want to put a title in your notes 
Uh, what's it going to cost? Numbers chapter 33, we're just going to look at some examples of some do's and some don'ts. What the Bible is so powerful when we begin to see it for uh, what it can do in our lives and, and, and let it speak to us. He said these things were written for our learning. It is a whole lot easier to learn from somebody else's mistake than to make one of your own. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Numbers 33. We'll go to verse uh, 50. The Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab. And he said, I want you to speak this to the children of Israel and tell them when you are passed over Jordan and come into the land of Canaan. He said, when you go in, you shall drive out all, how many? All, all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their pictures, all their images, the molten images. He's talking about their false gods and the things that they've set up. Pull down all of their high places. He said, and you shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess. He said, and you shall divide the land. He talks about the inheritance that they had and, and how they're supposed to go in and occupy. You know, and even Jesus tells you and I, New Testament, occupy till I return. Verse 55, but if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land, we're looking at what's it going to cost if we do, what's it going to cost if we don't? pain of discipline, pain of regret, and the things we might be putting off, not realizing you're only putting off to make it worse. You know, I, what, what, I've, what I have found is if you tend to ignore the weed, the weed gets bigger. You know, if you have that garden mentality or that growth mentality, anything you ignore, it, it, it usually don't go away. It, it has a way of multiplying or manifesting itself in a greater way than if you'd have dealt with it initially. But if you don't drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it will come to pass. It will come to pass, the Lord says, that those things which you let remain shall be irritants, pricks in your eyes, and thorns in your sides, and they shall vex you in the land that you live in. He said, don't tolerate what you need to dominate because it will only come back around. What's it going to cost? And we see the price that they paid for not fully obeying the voice of the Lord. Now, I want us tonight to kind of think about, is there anything that he might have told us that we didn't fully carry out? Or maybe some things that we've been putting off that we need to attend to. Or maybe just how, however this might apply to our lives. So that, like I said, we leave out of here better than we came in. We leave out of here more equipped to deal with life and maybe not even ourselves, but how to help others around us. Because it ain't about just us making it. It's only at the top if you're the only one there. But it'll never be lonely the higher you go if you're always taking somebody with us. You know, that's what the world mentality is. It's, it's lonely at the top. That's because they're only out for number one. They're only out to seek and, 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 to, and to serve self. As long as you have the benefit and welfare of others in mind as well, you ain't never going to be lonely because we're always going to have a crowd, right? So they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna be thorns in your side, and they're going to vex you in, in your... In, they're living in the promise, but being tormented because they didn't clear the land. And moreover, it'll come to pass that I will do unto you as I thought to do to them. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Genesis 26, more life lessons for us. What's it going to cost us? What's it going to cost? How we allow, and maybe I, I'm sure y'all don't, but how I've allowed maybe temporary problems uh, allow, cause me to make a permanent irrational decision. And, 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 and when you draw back and look at the big picture, it's a season that's going to pass. Everything is. Our whole lives are made up of seasons and times and, and things change and come and go. And you cannot base your tomorrows on what you're currently maybe going through. Genesis 25, verse 29 said, Esau came back in and he'd been out hunting and uh, he, he was just, he was famished. He was famished. And uh, we, I, I, I feel like I've, I've made that statement before. Man, I'm so hungry, I'm about to die. Well, you're not literally about to die, right? I mean, we can do, you go a long time without eating if you have to. We just don't want to. Well, I, don't, I know about y'all, but I know I don't. I know I don't. And, and, and he's in that same mentality. But, it, it's, it, it's, it, but our, our emotions can get the best of us if we allow it. Our feelings. That's why I said we're led by the Spirit, not by sight, not by flesh, feelings, emotions. Because all those things are out there, and the enemy knows that he can manipulate us if he can get a hold of those things. 
Jacob came back. Jacob was, he, he was cooking him a big old pot of stew. Esau came in. He's famished. He said, give me something to eat. I'm about to die. I am faint. That's what he said in verse 30. Jacob says, well, sell me your birthright. You know, and he's so moved by a temporary circumstance that he completely ignores his future. And what's it going to cost you when you do this? And what's it going to cost you if you don't? And then how you have to count the cost of everything we do, of everything we do, and, and, and weigh it in the balance of the Word, weigh it in the balance of the plan of God for our life. How's it going to affect us here? How's it going to affect us tomorrow? How's this going to affect my future or my children, my children's children? How's it going to position them or imposition them? Now, think about Esau. And, you know, had he, had he just off for a moment, and it's, it, we can all Monday morning quarterback, right? His life, that, it's written here so we don't make that mistake. God's basically putting this in here and saying, see what he did? Don't do that. <laughs> right? See what he did? Don't write off your future. Don't, 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 don't buy that big old house. It, ooh, I might be meddling now. Don't, don't buy that brand new car just because so-and-so got one and you think you had to have one. I, I told somebody just this evening, I said, I don't mind being the second one in the seat. They can pay that big old stick of I'm not against brand new either. Now, don't get me wrong. I just, you got to do what God has for you to do. There have been times that God has purposely told somebody, you need to buy brand new because you, you, you got me in a broke mentality and I don't like it. God said, I can afford new if that's, what I, if that's my plan for you. Just be a good steward. Just be a good steward, you know? But there ain't nothing wrong with buying secondhand either. It's got to be, what does he have for you? And he's, he's making this decision, which is going to, you know, I mean, we know because we're hindsighting it. He, he said, I'm about to die. What good is my birthright? If I die today, he ain't going to die today, but the devil can manipulate us. When we begin to be emotion-led and feeling-led and, and, and stuff-led, right? Stuff-led. that makes sense? Stuff-led. Got to have this. Got to have that. It's amazing how, how as we grow in the Lord, priorities change. There's things I thought I had to have that I don't no more need now and don't want nothing to do with. But it's allowing the Lord to work on it. And I ain't, he ain't perfected it in me. There's still, still stuff I get that I don't need. Y'all pray for me. Thank you, honey. That's my wife down here, if y'all didn't know. Like, Who's that hollering from the front row? That's my wife. Don't, don't usher her out. I got, to, I got to take her home tonight. But now I got to. I get to. I get to. I get to. Wait, what, what, what? I get to. There we go. All right. So anyway, back to this stew story. Stew story. Y'all like that? So he, he, he sold his birthright, and then it, it don't. We see, we see the, the other side of the coin go to Hebrews 12. But it's not enough to touch that side of it and, and let it be. We got to come back and see the other side of this. I mean, I, I really want the, the, the Father to speak to us in a way that, that we have an application. Hebrews 12, verse 14, follow peace with all men. And holiness, which, which out which, without which no man is going to see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fall from the grace of God. Lest there be any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you and I. He said, thereby which many are defiled. He said, lest there be a fornicator or a profane person as Esau. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He said, and you know. How that afterward, come on, say afterward. afterward. Afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he even sought for it carefully with tears. Some things are gone, and you cannot get them back. Oh, we, we living in grace, but I have seen a perverted message of grace. And I'm telling you what, it will never override the reality of consequence. You cannot, we cannot blindly fall on grace and use it as an excuse because the Father don't like that kind of abuse. Where's that line? I don't know, and I don't want to find out. We, we don't need to be Christian to try to walk the line. We need to stay as far off the edge as we can from whatever displeases the Father. 
Well, what's bad? And I'm going to get right up next to like that two-year-old, you know, over that line. Like you can't, you know, like little rebellious side in us. Y'all can't see me on the camera, but I'm over, towing over that little edge. <laughs> right? And God ain't happy with that. And God don't like that. And God don't like us living a life that preaches that. How close can we get to the edge? We ought to be in the center of his will, surrounded by the love of God, surrounded. So I got like a bumper car. I got bump on every edge, you know. Like bump, get me back in. Bump, you know. That's how we ought to be. And not living that way in fear. It's not what I'm talking about at all. But I'm talking about a reverence for God. It doesn't live. Reverence never should be displayed in haughtiness. And that's what living on the edge is. It's like, that's good for all them, but that don't apply to me. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> he said, y'all all fell short. Woo, we'll just let that go right there. Second Samuel chapter 11. It's a uh, familiar ground, but I just want to stir some stuff in our spirit. And let him, let the Holy Ghost take it to the next level. Second Samuel 11, counting the cost. What's it going to cost me if I do? What's it going to cost me if I don't? How is it going to set me up? How is it going to affect me? My children, my children's children. Esau and his whole family lost out on that level of blessing that could have been, should have been. Second Samuel 11, verse 1, it came to pass as the year was expired. He said, when the time that the priest would go forth to battle, go out to war, David sent Joab in his place with all of his servants. He stayed behind at Jerusalem. And it came to pass on a certain evening that David was taking a stroll across the royal balcony, comes out to the roof, and there he sees a woman down below on another roof lower than his washing herself. And the woman, it says, was very beautiful, very fine to look upon. Like, like my wife, much like. I, I probably, <laughs> probably paled in comparison <laughs> to my wife. But everybody, well, never mind, I just can't even... But he was way he, he shouldn't have been in the beginning. Don't, don't send somebody to do what you're called and anointed to do. Sometimes you can use your staff or, or your friends as an excuse for something you need to be attending to. And there's certain things that only you can handle. You know, the prophet found that out. He, you know, when the woman, her, her son had had the heat stroke and died, and he, and he sent his servant, and he said, go... Uh, lay hands on it and it didn't work it did not because there's some things you staff and people other people can't handle for you because you're the one that's anointed to do it so david comes back and wants to find out about Bathsheba. and we know this but i want to see the consequence side of it flip over to chapter 12 in chapter 12 we'll go to verse 7 nathan the prophet had given david this story about a guy who stole this uh, little sheep and david got all upset and the man ought to die and, david, and nathan says to him in verse 7 you're the man Wow. That's what the Word does is allow you and I to see ourselves in the mirror of the Word. It shows us what's really there. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you out of the hand of your enemy, Saul. He said, I gave you all of your master's house. Listen, listen, this is so powerful. And I, I really, I, I want us to understand that there's another level waiting on us if we just do it God's way. There's exceeding abundant above and beyond when we tap into God's way. He said, I gave you the master's house and, and, and all the stuff that he had. And if that had been too little, whoo, Jesus, he said, I'd give you more. What's he say in James? You have not because you ask not. Or maybe we're asking amiss. Got to find out what God's will is and then go after it with everything that's in us. And then when you know the will... I, I, let me say this correctly because I, I, I know we'll wrap our minds around it. When you know the will of God for you, the plan of God for you, the purposes of God for you, you need to ask aggressively Amen. for you. Give me chapter and verse. Okay, how about the widow who came to the judge and the judge pushed her off and pushed her off and she kept knocking, she kept pressing, she kept pushing. How about us? Wherefore, you despise the commandment of the Lord. And now you've done evil in his sight. Killed Uriah, your, your, your friend, your mighty man, the one who was out there, had his neck on the line for you. And now you took his wife. Therefore, verse 10, the sword shall never depart from your house. Wow, that is just, Father, help me. Count the cost. 
Lord, to help me to count the cost so that I never allow or introduce something like that into my family, into my bloodline, into my lineage. And we don't, and I want to just push this point again, we don't count the cost with a fearful mindset. We count the cost just to rightly dividing the work so that we know the weight of the consequence. That make Proverbs 22. No time's rolling on, but man, that, I, I wouldn't give nothing for the worship we had tonight. Man, there was some breakthrough. Woo, my, my, my. We got 50 sermons tonight in, in a one worship service. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a word tonight. We, Proverbs 22, verse 1. Everybody. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And loving favor rather than silver and gold. He's, well, he's talking about the consequence of choice. Even here, he's talking about weighing the cost. Weighing the cost. Rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is maker of them both. Prudent man foresees the evil, hides himself. The simple, the ignorant pass on and oh, they catch it. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. He's talking about obviously lasting riches, kingdom things and earthly things. But the difference is for you and I as a believer, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. Just because somebody's rich doesn't mean it's a sign from God. The devil can bless his kids. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But they're always looking over their shoulder. There's always a string attached to that thing. Train up a child, verse 6. We're talking about counting the cost. What's it going to cost me if I do? What's it going to cost me if I don't? Train up a child in the way he should go. Because if you don't, there's a consequence. There's a consequence. But when you do, even when he's grown older, he will not depart from it. The rich and the poor meet together. The borrower, servant to the lender. So iniquity, reap vanity. There's a consequence. Proverbs 14. Hang left and run over to Proverbs 14. Run it on over. Not literally. <laughs> 14 verse 1. Every wise woman. Ooh, there's one down here. Y'all ought to say me too. There's a bunch of y'all in here, right? Every wise woman builds her house. Good, I'm going to take it easy for a while. <laughs> Get to work, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but the fool pluck it down. He that walks with uprightness fear the Lord. He that is perverse in his way despises. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise preserve them. Where no ox are, the crib is clean. But by much increase is the strength of the ox. You have to, what's it going to cost us if we do? What's it going to cost us if we don't? It, 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 you, you can either have it clean and pretty and tight and right, or you can have it a little bit messy and enjoy the blessing and the benefit of it. You know, and it, you, you can't have it both ways. It, it, it's amazing how sometimes we pray for revival and something, the revival gets messy. And it's like, I don't, and why they got to carry on like that? And why they got to do all this? Well, you don't want to pray for revival, now you don't want it. I mean, just because it don't look like what you thought it was going to look like, you're going to throw God out the front door because it don't fit in your package? Or maybe when our kids get a hold of fire and it, just because they don't express it like we expressed it? And we want to start, you want the clean crib or we want the increase? And we got to learn that. It's amazing how sometimes you pray for what you pray for and then you don't like what you get, but you're the one to pray for it. Oh, God, I thank you. I, you got me a new job, and then you get fired the next day. God, why? Well, you asked for a new job, and you were so set in your ways, I couldn't get you out. So I had to boot you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that too much? Is that, y'all feeling that love? I, I, my brother's got a, a business, and it's flourishing, and, 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 and we've had conversations before along these lines. And he said, because he started with just him and, and, a, and a mechanic that worked for him. And he said, man, I remember when me and Bubba, we'd sit on the tree stump, you know, working on a piece of equipment, just having our lunch. And he said, you know, and you think you ain't got a problem in the world, you're doing all things, but it, there's, there's a, con not, and not even a bad consequence, it's just things come when you grow. You know, and now he's got probably 50-something employees and, and all the goodness that goes with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, but he's positioned in a place to do things he couldn't do when it was just the two. But now you just, you want the clean crib. Or do you willing to take and count the cost? And it's like, Father, if you put me here, then I got what it takes to handle where I'm at. And that's the end of that. I mean, that's where we ought to be looking. God, if you set me up here, 
then help me see what I need to see so that I can do what I've been called to do. And understand it. Sometimes we're just, we're irritated by that level because we haven't grabbed the grace that we need to be at that level. And it's not God's fault because he said, come boldly before the throne to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And sometimes we've got the position, but we forgot to pick up the grace along the way, which is the, oh, yes, that's the empowerment, that's the equipping, that's the wherewithal to do what we need to do when we've been positioned in that place. And I'm telling you, ooh, and just counting the cost. Like I said, that was, with, you know, with his business or whatever it is. And I just jotted some notes down so I don't forget to kind of jog all our memories to expand or, or, or expand and expect or whatever it's going to be. Married or, or be single and counting the cost. And it's amazing how sometimes people will get in a place where they got married and, and, and you didn't get, get counsel even though we recommended to get counsel and you didn't get counsel. So you, you may get blindsided by some things that are a reality that hit you. It's like now you got toothbrushes, two toothbrushes in the holder. You know, you might have white spatter spots on your mirror. And it's like, well, you wanted to get married and you didn't count the cost. <laughs> We've had this conversation before, you know, because I'm a roller on the toothpaste tube. My wife's a squeezer. <laughs> well, it's, we're just giving a little help tonight. And somebody gave us a little gadget that you slide the end of the toothpaste tube in and you just roll it up. Now, yeah, Joyful did. Yeah, you the second one that gave us. We got an abundance of toothpaste rollers. And uh, so I'm going to sell them on eBay. So, yeah, no, I'm kidding. But it's, you know, or you may have clothes to pick up that you, and well, I didn't never had this probably when I was single. But yeah, but do you want the clean crib or do you want the benefits? I'm, I'm going to go. Right, that's all I can go right there for right now. But it's just... <clears throat> And, and you know, well, when I was single, I wasn't in a relationship. I could, I could stay up late and watch movies and that. But see, now you got to prioritize. And it's, and it's everything in life. And I'm not saying one's better. I, of course, I kind of tend to like being married. But I'm just, you know, if, if that's not where God wants you, then don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there just because everybody else is going there. We, we, we have to be at the place where we only go where God opens up the doors. I mean, and I know he said, be fruitful and multiply. You know, and, and, and even in that, sometimes the way, I don't, man, it's, I don't want to stir up the waters tonight, but sometimes he, he needs you to adopt a child. Or I'm not, oh, that's, I don't want to get too deep into how he does what he does. I'm just saying, let him do what he does. Just count the cost of it. or Everything has a cost value associated to it and related with it. And we just need to be tapped into what thus saith the Lord for us. Mark chapter 1 is, uh, let's go there. I mean, it's, it's the disciples when Jesus is, is throwing out the call to them. Mark chapter 1 verse 16. And, and, and even in this, there's seasons that God will take you through in life. You know, and you might, you might need the house at the time and at the place and during the season where you have the kids and then God takes you and you downsize and it's not stepping backward to downsize, it's stewarding if that's where God wants you to be for that next season that you got coming up, you know, and less clean to do and less upkeep to do. And then, I don't, he, you know, grandkids come back in the scene and it's like boomerangs, you know, they come back around. And then you, you, it, but it's just staying in the flow of whatever he has for us. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Somebody said grandkids are the blessing of not killing your own. So I don't, I don't know that we're not there yet. Uh, <laughs> that when Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he said he sees Simon and Andrew, his brother, and they're, they're fishermen, they're casting a net. He says, come after me. I will make you to become. I'm so glad he, he, he was very purposeful in, in, in what he wrote to us because there, there are so many things I look at my life and say, man, I ain't there yet. And then I see where it's, it's becoming and it's a process. Now, I know we're saved, but it's then, then it's that, 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 that process that he takes us all through and from glory to glory and, and, and working on us and knocking off the rough edges. And man, that did I just want to encourage somebody tonight that don't get frustrated in the process and don't get frustrated in the journey and don't 
don't, don't allow the devil to, to, to get you to a place where you're so ready to give up because you hadn't arrived. Because I got news for us tonight. Hey, we ain't going to arrive on this side of heaven. There's always a growth process in us, and there's always some dead stuff ought to be falling off of us. And it always needs to be something we're probably putting on the altar so that we can get beyond where we are to the next place that he has for us. And just don't get frustrated and aggravated in your journey. Now, that's not saying we make allowance for sin. We don't tolerate sin in our life. We try to get it out. We allow the Spirit to show it to us and get it out of our life. But just don't, get, don't let the devil get you to a place where you just shut down. That they were, and they were, but he said, I'll cause you to become fishers of men. And said, and immediately they dropped their nets and they began to follow. And he goes on a little bit further and he sees James and, uh, you know, the sons of uh, Zebedee, James and John. And uh, they were also in the, in the ship and they were mending their nets. And he's, he called them and he said, immediately they left their nets and they left their father. And I'm, I'm thinking of, the, of what they left behind and counting the cost and what would it cost them if they did and what it, where would we be if they hadn't have. And I'm so glad that somebody went before me and blazed a trail and did what they did and made my life easier and made my path a little bit easier and gave me some things to look at and live by and some examples. And how about all of us? You know, what's it going to cost us if we don't? And I, I don't want us to be afraid of that or intimidated by that. I want us to be, I want us to be energized by that and, and, and look at how much better God, when he flows through us, we can blaze a trail for somebody coming behind us. And I, I want our kids to have a better life. And there's a lot of things going on socially and economically that need to be addressed. And we need to rise up, church with a righteous fire of God in us and address some of this stuff. And it, it's not a time to be uh, retreating. It's a time to be full-on advancing into every facet of life, politically, economically. I mean, be on school boards and business rooms and, and every place. I mean, they, they, they're still high places where we started about this. should have been torn down by the body of Christ. Are occupied by believers. What you mean? He said, God's the one who said, I want you to be the head, not the tail. Above only, not beneath. That is not just an Old Testament promise. That is a reality that God wants us to be in. He wants to position his people to be where you can affluence, have affluence and bring influence into the world that is around us. Every aspect of life, every walk of life, he wants us to, and, and, and I want to make it better. And I know you do too. And I just want to, I, I just want to encourage us by the word tonight to just go after it. Go after it. Go after it. You know, and, uh, and, and uh, I, I wrote this down. We might have to learn to count again. Let me show you this one, James 1. But sometimes Bible counting ain't like the way I used to count. And you'll know when we get there. James 1.1, 1, 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes and those that are scattered abroad. That's us. Greeting. What's up, y'all? That was the greeting, you know. <laughs> Brothers, I love this, verse 2, because this is like, man, if I could get my hands around James, I'd, you know, I want to lay the fivefold on him. But it wasn't him. It was the Holy Ghost giving us preparation, showing us how to count, scripturally count, biblically count, understand a new way of looking at things because we might not, be, might not have been looking at them the way we need to. Count it all joy when you're going through stuff. What you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? Y'all remember that? That, 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 did that? Did anybody else just hear that in their head besides me? Okay. Good, so I ain't crazy. Well, I ain't alone anyway. Put it that way. Woo-hoo! Yes. <laughs> Knowing that the trying of your faith is going to do something good for us. Yeah. It's going to do something good. And it's, and, it's, and it's like when the devil, not allowing that condemnation that the devil wants to heap on us or, or even other people who don't even understand what we're going. Man, they must have done. You know, it's like when the guy was blind and they come to Jesus. Who, who messed up? Did his mom and daddy mess up? Did he mess up? Why has he got this blind? It's oh, y'all on y'all, y'all the ones blind. Y'all can't see what's going on. Good God, bad devil. But he said, through this, God's going to get some glory. 
You might be in the middle of something, but you determine right now, count it all joy. Because going through this, God's going to get some glory. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. Then we can't be a church that's afraid to show battle scars to the next generation. Now, we don't glorify the scar. I've heard, you know, we've all heard testimonies that don't actually end up being testimony, right? It's 30 minutes of bad, and then, but God helped me. Right. No, it's like I was in a mess, but God helped me. God strengthened me. God brought me out. God is all I need. God, you know, <laughs> you, you know, it ought to, you ought not leave people beat up when you give a testimony. <laughs> and we don't need to get in testimony wars. Well, I, 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 let me show you this. You know, it's like, I won up you. <laughs> I was, you know, I was lame on both feet in God. And then I had a little pinky over here too. So it, was, it ain't testimony war. <laughs> but still, there's a way to, to, to allow others to come into our life and not be embarrassed of the scars because they show the bigness of God. When Jesus, when he appeared, he said, put your hands in mind and feel what I went through so you don't have to. And maybe our testimony is see what this cost me so you don't have to pay that price. See, see what this will do to you if you're on this path and listen to me and the voice of experience so that you don't have to go that route and so that you can be so much further ahead when you get to my level. And that's how we empower other people with where we've been and the things that are going on. You see, count it all joy, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. But don't get intimidated. Don't get put off in the process. Got to let patience have its full work that you may be mature. That's what perfect means, mature and then complete, wanting, lacking nothing. If you lack wisdom, just ask of God, but you got to ask in faith. He goes on. He says, oh, God is so good. Count it joy. Count it joy. Count it joy. Somebody tonight, you've been looking at the thing you've been going through with a, with a wrong mindset. Man, and, and, and as soon as you shift that mindset, God's going to open up a, a revelation for you that is going, it's like, oh, yeah, bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. And, and then not that we go looking for a fight. You know, my parents brought me up, and this might be different from you, and, uh, but, but our mentality was you, you never start a fight, but you finish it. Then I passed that on, and my wife didn't really understand why I was giving my son that instruction, but it worked well. <laughs> and, but we don't, you don't go looking for devils. You, you don't need to go looking for devils. But if one just crosses your path, or even a legion crosses your path, you got to know that you got what it takes to put him out. You got what it takes. You got what it takes. But if you're going through something, and, it, and you don't even have to have opened up a door, it's just because sometimes you're just minding your own business, and life crosses your path, and you have an intersection. You just need to decide at that point, you're not stopping me in my journey. I'm going to get to where God has for me. But whatever I'm going through, like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, I'll come out of it not even smelling like smoke. And we will come out of this in a way that if there's any unbeliever in my vicinity, they're going to see something they ain't never seen before. And they're going to know that I'm in the hands of a mighty God. I'm in the hands of the one who's got me. He's got us. Amen. Hebrews 12. Y'all check this out because we're talking about this counting thing. Hang a left. Go right back to Hebrews 12. And it seems like this scripture has been over and over and over in my face. 12.1. Wherefore, seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the sin and the weight that easily trips us up, besets us. Let us run with patience. See how this so ties in with James? We can't even run right if we don't have the patience to run. And, and maybe we're not having the patience because we've not been counting correctly the things that we're going through. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking, verse 2, unto 
Jesus. We don't look to the president. We don't look to the White House. We don't look to the Congress. We don't look to CNN or Fox or nothing or no one. I, I'm not saying we tune it all out, but we tune in God. We tune in God. We hear his voice because if you hear his voice, then you'll be able to hear his voice through whatever vessel he chooses to use. And we let him set the course. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on, who for the joy. You realize if he had never counted the cost, he wouldn't have gone to the cross. He counted the cost. What would it cost him if he didn't go, what would it cost us if he didn't go? And what have we gained because he did? What have we gained? You realize Jesus would not have missed heaven, but we would have. For the joy that was set before him. Who are you blazing a trail for? Who's going to be blessed by your yes? Who, who's, whose life is going to be better because we learn how to recount and see it in a new light and in a new way, a way that brings God glory in every single thing we do. That's, that's, the, that's the end game we want to be at. Amen? Let's stand. Father, we bless you. God, we just so grateful for all that you've done, for all that you continue to do. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of revelation that's been released in this place tonight. God, it's just, Lord, the world would say it's like electricity in the air, but Lord, we know it's not that. We know it's the anointing. But Lord, I want to remind somebody what you say about the anointing. It's yoke-breaking, burden-removing, So don't just receive the anointing for a chill bump or a feeling. Receive the anointing tonight for your breakthrough. Whatever you walked in here with tonight, if it wasn't from God, expect it to be gone when you leave. If you tuned in tonight, whatever you may have tuned in with, and it wasn't from God, expect it to be gone out of your life. Because that's the power of the anointing. And that's the thing that God desires to release over every single one of us. And not just to us, but through us. Father, we receive it, we declare it, and we let it flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.